Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here's my watch list for August 2nd. Okay, what an interesting day today. I mean, I went out to lunch, I checked my phone, all of a sudden everything dumps. Let's take a look at the spy right now. I mean, here we have uh, Mr. Trump tweeting, and um, right after the tweet with uh, slapping extra tariffs on China starting uh, September 1st, the whole market tanked. And uh, with this pull move, um, basically a lot of stocks got pulled down. And um, as of yesterday, the reaction from the Fed rates wasn't bad enough. Uh, today, we did see a slight recovery. And I'm thinking, uh, uh, after yesterday, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people were thinking of buying this dip and that they ever bought this dip, right? Right at the open, uh, the spy went up and uh, and then uh, Donald Trump comes out with the news and boom, okay? Um, so what is gonna happen tomorrow, right? Uh, I guess that's the question we wanna ask ourselves, what's gonna happen? Um, I don't think it's entirely correct to try to think about what's gonna happen. I think this news is still very fresh and it will take some time for people to digest. Uh, more importantly, I think as traders, uh, we should be more um, reactive. And, and uh, right now, I do advise staying a little bit more patient before uh, we get into anything. Okay, uh, with that said, I mean, let's take a look at the fear and, the, uh, fear and greed index, like uh, the whole market is in fear. Uh, what's very interesting, like I was looking at the news and basically uh, with the tariff news a lot, of stocks that got hit, um, the, the stocks that got hit the most are in retail. So tomorrow I'm going to pick a couple of tickers and a couple names and uh, from the retail side and focus on that because I think at the very least those names will have more of, um, more of a laggard reaction. I mean, if the market is dipping hard, uh, there's two, two ways people are going to be thinking. They're going to either panic and sell or they're going to think, um, oh, okay, it's time to buy the dip. However, if uh, the news is from uh, it's about tariffs and uh, it affects the retail side the most, I think people are going to be more hesitant to get back into the retail side. Uh, if they were to buy dips, they would be buying some other stuff instead of retail. I mean, if I was a fund, I would try to get my money out of retail and put it into somewhere else. I mean, uh, it's just uh, safer that way, right? Um, so I'll be looking into a couple of retail names tomorrow and uh, looking for more weakness. Uh, until the dust actually settles with this news, I don't think people will be, uh, will be wanting to uh, reinvest into retail, at least not for tomorrow. So retail is what I will be looking at tomorrow. Now let's take a look at the SPY real quick here. Uh, more specifically, the daily chart, right? Um, coming over here, I plot out some levels of resistance. I am expecting the SPY to actually bounce back up a little and then uh, and then uh, fall some more. Um, I mean, it can do either, either things, right? It can uh, get sucked up right in the morning, get bought right back up. But uh, amidst of this news and because of the fear and greed index, uh, everybody's a little bit fearful. I think they will try to exit out. And uh, who knows, because the weekend's coming, uh, Trump can tweet anything over the weekend too. So I don't think people will be uh, too eager to be putting their money in and longing anything over the weekend. If anything, they'll try to exit positions. So with that said, uh, my mindset is looking for a pop and drop tomorrow, especially on the retail names. And I think that's going to happen with the SPY as well. Taking a look at the daily chart real quick. Last time we had major action like this, I believe it was from um, early May, right? Uh, I didn't mark off a level here, but this is a level and this is the 295. Okay, which coincidentally, it was yesterday's uh, when the Fed rates um, announcement came. It was yesterday's lows, I believe. This is 295. Yes. Okay, so that's also a level. Uh, currently, we are sitting at uh, 294 and change. And uh, talking about some support and resistance here, let's zoom in. Um, so 295 would be a nice uh, resistance, although it's sitting a little bit too close right now. Uh, 
96.50, I'm looking at this right now, and this is also a line of resistance. As I zoom out a bit, you can't see it here. How did I get this level? Well, it's basically this little cup here, this bottom of this cup, right? And, and these few days, but if I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, go to the weekly chart and zoom out, Let's see. Oh, did I lose connection? I did. So let me reconnect real quick. Okay, if I zoom out on the weekly chart, you'll see how I got this level. Right? So it's basically the bottom of this. This is prior support on the weekly chart. Now becomes resistance. And it was also the highs of this week. Right? So 296.50, uh, immediate resistance. 295 I talked about already. And then as far as support goes, coming into the daily chart, once again, we have the 293.50s area. As I draw the horizontal line across, you see uh, this is where the dump happened in early May. Okay. Um, I think this also links to last year's all-time highs, the 293 and change. Right, so this is a pretty key level, and I do think uh, as the spy comes down here, uh, it really depends on what how it does on this level. If it snaps down in uh, the pre market, comes back up, tests and fails from here at the 293.50s area, the next key level of support we have is 290.35. Uh, swiping the horizontal line across, you'll see how this matches up right around here in April as well. And uh, in late June, we have some support there. Uh, zooming out real quick. And uh, yet another level here back in uh, 2018, right? So let me see in the weekly chart what I see here. Yeah, so basically um, as far as the timing goes, it dates all the way back to around April-ish area. So uh, pretty solid levels in my opinion. So that's the levels I'll be watching, looking for a pop and drop on SPY, okay? Uh, with that said, let's get into the tickers. Uh, two tickers specifically that I'll be watching and only two, keep it nice and simple. First one is Best Buy, uh, it's in the retail space. Best Buy had, um, had a down draw of 10% from the news, 10.8 uh, to be exact, okay? They are on relative volume 2.76 and an average shoe range of two. Uh, with that said, it's looking like it's closing a little bit, a tad above 68 coming onto the daily chart here. 68 is a key level, as you can see, I marked it off right here. So um, just looking at the few months back, uh, 68 played a key role and then the next level of support is 66.50 now with the way this thing closed uh, it closed pretty weak I am expecting it to come down to 66.50 and then from here whether it bounces or not I don't know right if it does bounce then uh, you can long it back up and I will actually show you how to buy this bounce I'll show you the exact pattern that I'll be looking for to buy the bounce. Uh, as far as resistance side goes, uh, the 69 and the 67, uh, sorry, the 69 and the 70 is uh, the resistance levels I'll be looking for, uh, especially 70 because it's a key psychological whole number and you do see this is a, a really key area for the daily chart right here. Uh, the 69 as well, I'm gonna mark it off real quick. I mean, even if you just eyeball it, it's about right here, right? So 69, uh, pretty key area. You see this massive candle where it tanked. Uh, 69 intraday here as well. It was basically the low of when the tweet came out, right? And then uh, we had a little bounce up, came down again, bounce up, and finally snapped through. So now 69 becomes resistance, okay? So looking for a pop and drop. If the pop doesn't come, just looking for the flat out drop at the open. Okay, uh, if this 66.50 does snap, then we are coming down to, well, 66 first, right here, okay, on the daily chart, and then uh, perhaps 65, we don't know if it can run that far. So BBY, uh, two types of play, both the long side and the short side, as long as I'm watching these key levels, I'm watching for the action happening there. Uh, next up, we have KSS, Kohl's, another big retail name uh, affected, uh, by Trump's tweet, 
let's load up some drawings on KSS real quick. Um, key support area at 49.15, okay? So what's interesting is this 49.15 is basically right here, all right? So um, that's where we're at right now. This is a key level of support, okay? Looking on the daily chart, Coles uh, was actually making its way back up. And uh, so we might see some relative strength tomorrow, but I highly doubt it because it is retail. And um, looking, depending on how this uh, 4915 reacts tomorrow, right? Uh, from the looks of it, it's looked like it's gonna gap down tomorrow. And if it can stay down under 49, it's a short off this level. Uh, looking, if I'm gonna look for a pop and drop, uh, the 49.75, this nine, uh, this nine EMA here on the 30 minute chart, as well as the 50. Okay, uh, coming over here on the 50. Let's mark that off for you. You'll see why this is important. First of all, is a key psychological whole number. All right, you see how there's a range here, and then 49.75 is basically right around this area. Okay, I marked off the 48.80s here. Let's remove the 50 line, and you'll see more clearly right about here. You see this doji right here uh, on what day is this? July 22nd, and then we have the low on July 23rd. We have it's basically a horizontal line across, right? So 50. 49.75 uh, this is a resistance zone uh, I'm looking for a pop and drop as you can see after the dump it never got back up and above right and over here on this five minute chart you do see that it was testing testing and holding it down and now we're fading a little bit after hours uh, as far as target goes I'm aiming for the 48 which is right here I mean, very key level of this little U-shaped cup here. And then if the 48 does snap, um, 47 next. So every dollar, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't think 48 will snap tomorrow. We'll have to see. I mean, don't hold me to this call. But a pop and drop would be ideal, right? Uh, a little pop so that 9 EMA catches up and then drop back down. So that's kind of like my two plans for tomorrow. And um, that's basically it. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you guys how, or what I'll be looking for if I was to buy a dip. So let's go to Tesla real quick. Okay, and I'm gonna load up some drawings on Tesla. TSLA, yeah, okay. So actually on the, on the one minute chart, let's do the one minute chart. Zoom out right here. Okay, so this is a trade that I plotted out and it was one of the trades that I made a few days back on Tesla when they had a big drop, I believe it was on their earnings. Okay, and uh, I basically, I was trying to catch the bottom and the bounce. So this is the basis of a bounce play when, uh, when I'm looking for a bounce play, how I would enter, right? Uh, as you can see right over here in the morning, I did try to get in on the bounce a little bit too early from the open. Uh, what day is this? This is July 25th. I did try to get in on the bounce a little bit too early. So I got in here on the green candles are my entries, my, the red candles are my exits. So I tried it with starter size, get stopped out. I tried it again after this wick and then I get stopped out again on starter size and then eventually I waited. So these two first two trades on the starter size, I kind of failed on but uh, it's because I use starter size though, so I was never really hurt by it. It's just small dinky paper cuts. But what I am looking for is I wait after these two losses, I wait until the price discovery ends. <clears throat> so around 9.45 to 10 o'clock area, eventually the stock did find the bottom. I got in here on starter size once again. Uh, this was a key level at the 226 on the daily chart. So that's why uh, and once I saw this chart get bought up and I was reading the tape, uh, it was holding. I got in starter size and it came down and this kind of confirmed and I added in and uh, it held. It held this level. So as it was coming up, I sold some, I sold some, uh, came down and held the 9 EMA. I added, all right, and then it rejected the VWAP. So I stopped out, stopped out, and that was it for this trade. But uh my point is, if I'm looking for a bounce, as you can see, you see higher lows, right? Once it bottoms out, 
you see a quick double bottom and then a higher low here, consolidation area, higher low here. I could have gotten here as well. And then coming down over here, it actually helped this level, the prior higher low. So I really didn't have much of a reason to get out. If anything, I should have added, right? And then here we see a higher low again in the consolidation area. Uh, this one I actually got in. It was a very tight consolidation area over here. So I got in uh, anticipating the break of VWAP. Um, my risk was uh, a little below this once I got in, right? So a little below this, it was basically my risk was around this breakout area right here right here so um, my point is once you see it bottom out starts consolidating and making higher lows these are the levels that you want to get in where you have very tight risk right and uh, i got in here as it popped through i sold a little and uh, basically the trade continues on so that's the typical pattern i look for in a bounce play and if i'm gonna look for a bounce tomorrow these are the patterns i'll be looking for Okay, so that's basically my watch list this evening. Just two tickers tonight, uh, KSS and BBY. Um, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. You enjoy my watch list. And uh, trade safe. Uh, if anything, you don't have to trade tomorrow. It is Friday. So wait for the perfect setup. Be very patient and uh, have a great evening. Ciao.